Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining me today to discuss automating vSphere with PowerCLI. My name is Andrew Richardson, I'm a senior consultant with VMware Professional Services. Um, I have a real passion for automation, so I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you can really take something away from it to help you uh, with your day-to-day -day activities. So let's jump in and have a look at the agenda. Today we're going to cover off, firstly, why automate with PowerCLI, then we're going to jump in and look at using PowerShell custom objects to create reports with PowerCLI. We're going to look at using configuration templates to drive scripts. And then lastly, we're going to have a quick look at using code capture to support, uh, sorry, to convert uh, vSphere UI actions into code. So why automate with PowerCLI? So I think there's three main benefits that automation provides. Firstly, uh, consistency, because automation is uh, repeatable and accurate. Secondly, agility, because uh, repetitive, complex tasks can be uh, completed rapidly. And lastly, manageability, because you can't effectively manage a large vSphere estate without it. So let's have a quick look at using PowerShell custom objects to create reports. Firstly, what is an object in PowerShell? So an object in PowerShell is simply an encode representation of something. In the context of vSphere and PowerCLI, an object could be a virtual machine, it could be a data store, it could be a network port group, it could be a, a, a host cluster or an actual host itself. Pretty much anything that you can think of interacting with in the vSphere client can be represented as an object within PowerShell using PowerCLI. Now objects have one or more properties and properties are simply characteristics of an object. Uh, so if you haven't seen an object before, if, if you haven't worked with PowerCLI, an easy way to think about it conceptually is that an object is similar to a spreadsheet with rows of data under headings, where our rows of data are the objects and our headings are the different attributes. So how do we explore the properties of an object? We know that we want to take a look at something, in this case a virtual machine, and we want to understand what the different objects, uh, what, sorry, what the different members are, what the different properties are within a virtual machine object. So we can use the get VM commandlet and pipe it to get member, which will output for us a list of all the different uh, properties that are contained within the virtual machine object type. And so here the output of our object is uh, a table of names and uh, names of properties and their member type, all of which are properties. Now there's only five properties on this list, but in actual fact, if you have a look in your own environment, you'll see more like 30 or 40 different attributes that come with a virtual machine, uh, or different properties that come with a virtual machine object. And every object within PowerCLI will have a different set of properties. So jumping ahead to selecting properties of a VM object. We've had a look at our uh, VM object. We know which attributes we want to uh, select and filter down on. So this is another technique that we can use to explore the uh, properties of an object. In this case, we're again doing get VM, and we're piping that to the format table commandlet which will format our output as a table. And we're actually, uh, now that we've had a look at the object, we know what properties are part of that object. We're actually selecting five different properties that we want to use in our report. So running this command gives us the following output, which is a fairly simple report of a virtual machine or a number of virtual machines, their power state, number of CPUs and memory, and the data store ID list. So now we understand what an object is in PowerShell. Let's talk about what is a custom object. So a custom object is something that we create using uh, any data that we want. Uh, it's typically properties from multiple different types of objects. So why do we want to do this? Well, creating reports from properties from one specific kind of object, for example, a virtual machine, as we just saw, is uh, very easy, but it's of limited usefulness. However, combining properties from multiple different types of objects allows us to create much more useful reports. So let's have a look at creating a custom object. The first thing we do is get our VMs. In this case, we're getting one specific VM called test VM, and we're piping that to a, oh, sorry, we're, we're putting that into a variable. The second thing that we're going to do is get a VM host. And we're actually using the virtual machine uh, VM host property to select the, virtual, the, the VM host or the ESXi host that the virtual machine is running on. And we're going to put that into a variable as well. Now after that, we're going to create our custom object using the new object commandlet, and we're going to add our properties, our custom properties, to our object. So we've got a custom property called VM and a custom property called cluster, and the values of those custom properties 
are simply the properties from our uh, two objects up above, our VM and our host. So with that technique, let's look at an example use case. Why might you need or want to create a custom object? So let's say our boss comes up to us and says, hey Andrew, can you create me a report listing the VM name, the data store name, and the cluster name for each virtual machine in our environment which is powered off? How are we going to do this? <coughs> so we know that each VM object contains a property for its name. That's very easy. <coughs> However, a VM object uh, does not contain a property for its data store name. It does contain a property for data store ID. A VM object also does not contain a property for cluster name, but it does contain a property for the parent ESXi host. And then the ESXi host object contains a property for the parent cluster name. So we put all that together, and let's look at how we do it. Again, we're getting our VM. In this case, we're selecting only VMs that are powered off. And we're putting those into a variable. We're creating a report variable, which is simply an array. And we're going to use that array to store each of our um, custom objects when we create it. We then jump into a loop. We're looping through each of our virtual machines. And for each one, we're going to create a new custom object, exactly as we just saw previously. And we're going to create, uh, we're going to grab the data store ID, uh, or the data store that the virtual machine is running on, using the data store ID property from the virtual machine. And we're going to grab the host, again, exactly the same way, using the VM host property of the virtual machine. Now, we're going to create our custom object again. We're going to add our custom properties. This time we've got our virtual machine, our data store, and our cluster. And then finally, we're going to add each custom um, object to our report, our array of different custom objects. Lastly, we're going to output our report as a table. And here's our output. So we've got our virtual machines that are powered off. We've got our data stores. That's the data store that the virtual machine is running on. And we've got our cluster, which again is the cluster that the virtual machine is running on. Instead of outputting this as a table on screen, you could also uh, output it as a CSV file. You could email it. You could output it as raw text. There's a few different options there. So some other example use cases for this technique that I've come across in the last 12 to 18 months are things like reporting on DRS and HA configurations for all clusters in your environment, reporting on active and standby uplink and NIC teaming configurations for your distributed port groups. Those both are kind of in a health check situation where you might want to uh, report on the configuration across your whole environment and make sure that everything is configured correctly and you haven't had configuration drift. Uh, we can look at reporting on all HA events in the vCenter uh, server and selecting the application or function tag for each affected VM so that we can contact the owners of those VMs. Uh, and then similarly, maybe we can use uh, our report to list all VMs with attached ISOs uh, and identify the owner by the owner tag. So with custom objects out of the road, let's have a look at using configuration templates to drive scripts. Now this builds on the concept of uh, custom objects, and we'll go through why. But firstly, what do I mean by a configuration template? So using formats like CSV or JSON to store configuration data about things that we're trying to script. Uh, PowerShell can easily read and convert these file types into custom PowerShell objects. And then we can use properties of each object to iterate through our scripts. So here's an example. This is a, a CSV file called port groups. It contains three uh, different pro uh, columns of data. We've got our port group name, we've got our VLAN ID, and we've got our vSwitch. And we've populated in four rows of sample data. So what do we do with our uh, CSV file? Well, importing, it into CS importing a CSV file into PowerShell is extremely easy. We just use the import CSV uh, commandlet to put our um, our CSV file into a variable, and this will convert it into a custom object. We're then going to output our custom object as a table just to see what it looks like inside PowerShell. And as you'll see, it looks almost exactly the same as our, uh, as our CSV file, <laughs> which we were editing or updating with uh, Excel. So what do we do with configuration templates? Well, there's two main ways that we, that, that we use configuration templates. Way number one, is that we use uh, the script, or sorry, we use the configuration template to drive the script. The second way 
is that we use the environment to drive the script and then we reference the configuration template. And we're going to go through and look at each of these in a bit more detail. So option one, which is driving the script from the configuration file. In this example, our use case is creating new port groups from our port group CSV file. Uh, so again, we're just going to put that into a variable which converts it into a PowerShell object. And then we're going to loop through each row in our uh, PowerShell object or in our CSV file. And we're going to create a new port group from each row using the row name, the uh, VD switch, and the VLAN ID. And that's simply going to loop through the contents of our CSV file and do something for each line. Option two is uh, driving the script from the environment using the configuration template. Now, the use case for this is slightly different. We're going to look at updating existing port groups in the environment using configuration that's stored in our template. So in this example, we're again going to import our CSV. We're also going to look at getting a VD switch <coughs> called Site A Management, and we're only going to get the VD port groups on that one VD switch. We're then going to loop through the actual port groups that have come from our environment, and we're going to use the next line here to reference the line in the configuration file where the port group name matches the name of our port group from our environment. From there, we can set our port group uh, VLAN ID based on the configuration stored in the template. So why might you choose one approach or the other? Well, it really comes down to the way that you want to structure your configuration files and the way that you want to structure your scripts. And really, the key difference is the source of truth for your script. In the first example, the source of truth for our script is the CSV file, and we're simply going to loop through it and do everything that it tells us to do. In this second example, the source of truth is our environment, and uh, this is a great example to use if we, for example, have a CSV file that contains information for every port group in the whole environment, but we only want to operate on a handful of them. <coughs> so let's look at some example use cases. Uh, we can use this technique to create or configure pretty much anything that you can think of, from distributed switches and port groups, to data stores and data store clusters, to ESXi hosts, to virtual machines. Pretty much anything you can think of, you can use this technique if you need to store different uh, objects and different properties of each object. And then lastly, let's have a quick look at using code capture to convert vSphere UI actions into code. Now, for those of you who haven't heard about Code Capture, what is Code Capture? Well, Code Capture is the new version of the Onyx Fling from VMware Labs. And Code Capture generates API level or low level Power CLI code from UI inputs. Uh, it's now built into the vSphere HTML5 Fling. Uh, so it's, not, it's no longer its own separate Fling. Uh, it's not in the vSphere 6.7 HTML5 client yet, but I believe it's coming. How do you use code capture? So here's an animation where we are clicking a record button in the vSphere UI, and we're going to perform an action on one of our virtual machines. In this case, we're going to shut down the guest OS. Once we confirm our choice, we're simply going to go and stop our recording through the UI, and that will jump us over to the code capture section of the UI, where we'll see our output PowerCLI code for powering off or shutting down a guest OS. Now I said that Code capture generates low-level PowerCLI code. What does that mean? Well, let's have a look at some high-level PowerCLI code. This is the kind of code that if you've used PowerCLI before, you're probably very familiar with. And that is the default native commandlets that come with PowerCLI. In this example, we've got the code here to get our VM called test VM and stop it and then start it again. So you can see that's just two lines, pretty straightforward and easy to read. Now, looking at the low-level PowerCLI, you can see that this is a fair bit more detailed, and this is actually the output that's come from Code Capture for the exact same action. Now, what we're actually looking at here, and the reason why it's a bit more detailed, is because we're actually looking at how you manipulate the vSphere API using PowerCLI. So, why use Code Capture? Well, two main reasons. First of all, I think it's a great tool to help learn PowerCLI. Uh, and even more so, it's a great tool to help learn the vSphere APIs. There's some things that you can do in PowerCLI that you can only achieve through the APIs. An, ex an example of that is enabling the vMotion net stack on a VM kernel interface for vMotion. There is no default or native high-level commandlet to do that operation. Um, and a few months ago, I had to write a script that needed to do just that. 
I couldn't figure out how to do it through the APIs myself, but I was able to use Code Capture or Onyx to generate the API commands and then backwards engineer that to put into my script. So what's next? Well, I think the first place to start if you want to get more familiarity with automating vSphere with PowerCLI is hands-on labs. You can see a link to hands-on labs up on the uh, slide at the moment. And there's a demo, or a, a lab I should say, that is specifically targeted towards PowerCLI. So this is great if you want to dip your toe into the environment um, and uh, go through some really great lab-based uh, exercises to increase your familiar familiarity with PowerCLI. Um, but really, I think, more broadly, the best thing that you can do is just start to automate everything. Uh, if you can use PowerCLI in one form or another every single day, you will really inc improve your skills with the product, and you'll start to uh, understand what's possible. Um, I think that the main thing that you'd want to do, and the thing that we often do out in the field, is targeting the main 80 or 90 percent of, or, or the, 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 the biggest uh, 80 or 90 percent of what you're trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis, and just automate your way down that list. So with that said, thanks very much, and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon.